Hey everybody, Andrew Fantasia here, and guess what? Spike Lee has just passed us another joint. Let's get started. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Welcome one and all to Thumb Together. Today we are going to be talking about Black Klansmen together. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and as always, if you enjoy this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up and give some love to that subscribe button as well. What is Black Klansman? It's based on a true story about a man named Ron Stallworth. He was the first black police officer in the town of Colorado Springs. And this is about what he did in the real life for realsies back in the day. Now this film is set in the 70s. I'm not sure exactly the date, but from the style and everything, it's the 70s. And what Ron Stallworth is famous for is that he infiltrated the KKK by teaming up with another detective on the force, a white detective, uh, who they both pose as the same person and they try to take down the Colorado chapter of the Klan from the inside and they did a pretty decent job of it too. John David Washington, who's actually, I did not know this, but he is the son of Denzel Washington. He plays Ron Stallworth, he's the main character, and teaming up with him is Adam Driver as his partner in crime, or partner in law, I guess, Philip, and the two of them spend the movie pretending to be the same person. The real Ron Stallworth communicates with the clan over the phone. Philip, posing as Ron Stallworth, goes and joins the clan in person because he is a white dude, so naturally he fits in. And it's just about their misadventures, uh, taking down this clan and, you know, learning about their operations and all that jazz. It's kind of a buddy cop movie, I guess, even though they're, you know, the two of them don't share too many scenes together. But when they do, you have a lot of fun. One of the things I was not expecting was that David Duke, who was at the time the Grand Wizard of the KKK, is actually, he plays a big role in this story. Topher Grace plays him in the movie and he, he does a really good job just bringing that total misinformed sliminess of him, you know, where he's standing there talking about eugenics and he's like, we're the superior race. It's a scientific fact. And like, he believes his own bullshit like a little kid. But I didn't realize that, you know, in this true story of what Ron Stallworth did, that they got so far in this infiltration that they were carrying phone conversations with David Duke. Ron Stallworth became so trusted by Duke over the phone and in person that... Like, they were buddies. You could call them buddies. And that makes it all the more hilarious because Duke is completely oblivious to the fact that he's been spending X amount of months having conversations on the phone, you know, dropping the N-word left, right, and center and talking about how great, you know, white America is and how the master race is so beautiful. And meanwhile, he's talking to a black police officer who's just trying to keep a straight face and is like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, please, Mr. Duke, tell me more. Tell me more. That alone, like, all those phone conversations that Ron has with Duke are hysterical. Every time the film cuts to a shot of John David Washington sitting at his desk about to pick up the phone, everybody in the audience is, like, leaning forward, like, oh, what's going to happen now? What is Duke going to say to him now? So I really liked that about Black Klansmen. I really liked that it had this whole, you know, double identity undercover story, which makes it funny and tense because of, you know, this trick they're playing on these, like, really just overly racist, like, idiots. So that's all, like, fun and, and interesting. But then on top of it, there's this layer of terror. These Klansmen are very dangerous. You know, their houses are just, like, the, the walls are lined with guns. Like, these people are just the insane you know, gun-toting rednecks that you imagine they are. And to top it all off, Adam Driver's character, Philip, yeah, he's white, but he actually has Jewish roots. And guess what? The Klan's not a fan of the Jewish folk either. So he's got to, you know, put on a neutral face and be like, nah, I hate the Jews too. Yeah, I'm one of you. Don't worry. And he does his job well because he's a detective and he's not breaking character, but you can see when he you know, is off by himself in private, it's starting to weigh on him. And he's like, damn, my, like, this sucks. This really sucks that the, there are people out there like this. And on top of all of that, one of the clan members, this guy by the name of Felix, who is insane, he does not trust Philip. He does not buy this story he's telling him about being this guy named Ron Stallworth. He's convinced Philip is Jewish. 
just somehow he's got a he, he's got a feeling he's like you you smell like a Jew to me and, and and he's he's just onto him for the whole movie he can't prove it but he's like sniffing at his heels like an eagle scout so Philip has to contend with this friggin psychopath who's always hovering around him while at the same time doing his job and gathering as much intel on these clan members as possible so you've got this great balance of sheer fun entertainment with characters that you care about, mixed with really intense, frightening, thriller levels of suspense. Um, not quite at the level of Get Out, but pretty damn close. I'll give it that. Pretty damn close to that mixture, that sweet spot of fear and fun. It really straddles that line well. Just not as well as Get Out, but what are you going to do? There is one thing that did bother me about the movie, and it, it, it kind of annoyed me in a way, and I, I don't understand why this happened but when Ron first picks up the phone and decides he's going to call the KKK and he does he puts on a voice that makes him sound more white and more southern normally Ron is a pretty soft-spoken guy you know he has a pretty neutral voice he's like hello I'm Ron Stallworth uh but when he picks up this phone and pretends you know he wants to join the clan he kind of makes it a little higher pitched and tries to sound you know southern and white and he does and that's his phone voice. But when Philip, Adam Driver's character, pretends to be him and goes and meets the clan in person, he doesn't do that voice. He's just like, hello, I'm Ron. I'm the guy you spoke to over the phone. And I'm like, why is he not trying to sound like Ron? That doesn't make any sense. And there's even a scene where the two of them are sitting together in like a supply closet and Ron hands Philip these papers and he's like, okay, you're going to read out loud those papers and we're going to get you to sound like I sound over the phone. And, and they're doing this back and forth and it's fun and you're having a good time, whatever. But that never carries on. That, that never matters in the end. You know, David Duke would be talking on the phone with the real Ron and the real Ron is like, yes, hello, my name is Ron Stallworth and this is my white voice, blah, blah, blah. And then he meets Philip, who's pretending to be Ron, and Philip's like, hello. I'm Ron Stallworth. We spoke over the phone. You must recognize my voice, right? And I'm like, no, he shouldn't recognize your voice because you sound like two entirely different people. So I don't know why they didn't address that. Like, that that's kind of a big deal. I have to dive into spoilers to continue talking about this. So I'll, I'll, I'll move the spoiler alert when, the, when uh, this is over. But there's a point at the end of the movie where David Duke visits Colorado Springs. And, you know, it's a big deal. And because he is David Duke, he asks the police department to give him police security during his visit. And as some kind of, you know, sick joke, the police chief sends Ron to be the security. He sends their only black officer to guard the Grand Wizard of the KKK. And when Ron shows up, you know, this detective, black man, big afro, he shows up and he walks right up to David Duke. He doesn't try to change his voice. Again, he's just like, hello, Mr. Duke, in the same voice that he uses over the phone. And even David Duke is like, have we met before? You sound familiar. And I'm like, dude, why are you not changing your voice? What is wrong with all the characters in this movie? Nobody is changing their voice strategically. What's happening? So that kept bugging me, and it, it was like a thing that, like, I'm like, you're detectives, you're undercover, change your voices, please, and they never did. So that was really annoying. I, I don't know why that happened, but that was probably my only qualm with this movie. Other than that, it was really great. Of course, this is a Spike Lee movie, and, you know, Spike Lee is the kind of guy who he's got a message, and he's going to get his message across one way or the other. And at the end of the movie, he gets his message across and it crosses a point where, you know, okay, we've had our fun, but now we got to talk serious for a minute. And when he talks serious, he talks serious. The end of Black Klansman is a punch to the gut. Uh, it hits home very much so. It's made even more powerful by the fact that this film was a period piece. And then all of a sudden, it reminds you that it's not a period piece. That, you know, it's 2018, but in many places it's still 1970 whatever. Hell, in many places it's still 1870 whatever. And it lets you know that unapologetically. And kudos to them for doing that, for being brave enough to do that. I'm sure there are many, many people who are going to be upset by how Black Klansman ends. They're going to be upset by what Spike Lee chose to show to sort of put a cap on all of this. Uh, but you know what? It's something that we all, I think, 
need to see and need to be reminded of. So you'll have your fun, but you'll learn some shit too, and you'll be reminded of some shit, and you're going to walk out of this movie angry. Um, Not angry at the movie, like, oh, that was a bad movie, but angry at racism. Plain and simple, angry at racism, at anti-Semitism, at all of this, like at, at at the kind of people who would join the KKK and buddy up with David Duke. You'll be angry at how scarily numerous those people seem to be even today. But that is Black Klansman, and I would definitely recommend it. It's one of the best Spike Lee movies I've seen in a long time. Aside from the fact that you have a room full of professional detectives who apparently don't know how to change their voices, uh, this was a really, really good film that leaves you with some really, really heavy impressions and emotions, and you'll be thinking about it for a long time after you watch it. So that has been Thumb Together for today. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and for the rest of the week, I will not be present as much. I'm going to be going down to the States for a bit to take care of some acting business, Uh, but I will be back by the end of the week and hopefully have some other reviews up for you on the weekend if I get a chance, but uh, unfortunately, Real Deal will not be happening this Wednesday. But don't miss me too much, baby. All right, I'll see you here next time. Until then... Adios.